My name is Theophanes Orthanos, and this is my story. <laughs> and they put me, take my, I was sure they you know, put me there in a, one little barn, the wood like this open, <laughs> cold. Yeah, and in the morning, the larger fella come in, and he says, put the, put the rope on the light with your hand. <laughs> uh, I mean, if I say it, you, you know, it, you thought of it the uh, only dream. One day, I no far for the cabinet, cabinet, I go here, there, we have a big hole, and they bring the big truck with the potatoes, and the potatoes put hay in the top row. That way the potatoes can be stored, no freezing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the stupid guy, I thought I was smart, right? Steal the potatoes. Soon as I started to go inside. <laughs> and in the morning, the larger fear come in and, and he says, put the, put the rope on the light with the hand. <laughs> I'm the stupid guy, he tried to be too Greek, and he says, Will you do it to me? And those people go back to my country, the people are gonna tell me how I die. He looked me like this, and he says to me, Piccolo, pet, go to the camp, go ahead. <laughs> I'm laughing today. My age, 92. Born in, in Greece, Athens, Greece, 1927. Those particular times, the old ones will have the fun playing with the balls on the ground. Yeah. Yes. We found in the ground everything, everything, and the small stones who play ourselves. Stones, yeah. We like to have that too. Here yeah, and there we found really, we call it American balls. It used to be yellow. All <laughs> those days, American balls. <laughs> My family was all together, seven people. One single house and a single room. My extra lady. Skate house, we call it, like uh, the bathroom area. So it was, it was one room. And one seven room people. and a floor in the ground. Put blanket and sleep in the ground. Did you go to school? Did you, were you in any? I've been in a school only the second grade. I not finished second grade. Was closed the school everything was the particular time. No more school. They were closed. They were closed. Everybody, nobody had the time for that. Everybody said, look for survival. Did you play any sports or were you a part of any? For the beginning, I used to be play soccer. Up to 90, 40, 44, 33, where the Germans stopped everything. We never know up to 1940, we hear the sirens uh, early in the morning, and after we find out the Italians event to Greece, uh, north, for coming from Albania south. What did you do when you heard those? Uh, everybody wrapped around and tried to, all the families, every family tried to find a lot of things, because a lot of people go to the army voluntarily. Everybody tried one to help the other. And after that, 1942, if I'm not mistaken, May 1st, May 2nd, I hear the radio, the German talk, and the event the Greece. A lot of people started left to the mountains. And the 
Acropolis, it used to be the Greek uh, flag. And a few weeks later, we find out the Germans put down and put their own flag up there. From there, I know the Germans occupy Greece. They make the curfew. The summertime, 9 o'clock. You in the time, 6 o'clock. You, if you're in the street, you got to stay there. Because no one boom down, there's no hole, nothing. Because they started to create a lot of underground, big underground in Greece. In different cities, the young for 18, 20, 25 years of age, in every town, you have a group communication. Like an example over here, talk to Alexton, here another communication, Lexington. We move with different materials. Gun uh, materials move from one area, somebody take it the other town and keep going. And, but the world would not have no knowledge. So you would, so someone would give you a gun or something and then yeah. you would... People uh, are uh, the high guys, 20, 20 years of age. They grab the youngsters to do something because nobody suspicious so much. The young, like I did it to my brother. I give some to my brother, but it's so full. The time of they get up early in the morning to go out to look for something to bread. As soon as I get out, they turn me down and take me out of there for Thank my, you, uh, my the, uh, the same town. And they came out of here, bring me Lily up. Soon as go Lily up, I see another group for five people. Another, uh, another soldier, they came out bring me up. About and two miles away from my house, when I go there, I got about three, four hundred people already in the ground. Now, before we know, another people come in. Around uh, approximately 11 o'clock, two jeeps, come in and want tanks come in there. The two jeeps have to bring in some people they call it stupid jeeps. Stupid, stupid. And they have and a half. And when they put that down with all in the floor, and the Germans coming through looking, soon take it out. Soon take it out, bring the Germans up, soon bring it up. The place I play soccer, Panionios, the name. We used to have red and blue shirts. And because we don't have nothing, we wear that. I'm laughing. One of them, as soon as he saw me, like red, says to me, I'm so communist, I have even red uh, dress. And I try, and says to him, what are you talking about? I am belong to the, I play soccer, Panionios. He looked at me like this, says to me, what's your name? I told my name and he pushed me to put me the other side. Here the guy now with the general pushed me the other side. It got through. <laughs> my luck. I believe that day before the take away, about 30, 32 <coughs> kids he killed. Soon he finished the kill and all the kill, and one big uh, army, German commander, you know, sergeant, what you call it, and talked to the others, just any kids, the other, to go back to school, let's go. At four, five, you get get up and go to school. Soon up, rip, rip, rip and down. And shot them. Rip and down, yeah. All the people, the end, bring us in line. It's a walk and all the way to go back 10, 50 miles away to the, go to the camp. And they keep us uh, approximately two, day, two weeks there. Matter of fact, I remember in German, he, he, the watchman, he has one big stick like this, and the end have a big ball. When you hit, hit everybody, you know them? They are long as they, you can't believe it. Finally, what will bring us to the train station? We go there, Gestapo, a lot of all Germans, you mean. Slowly, I see the Red Cross come in. 
I mean, I, I saw a lot of Red Cross, which, which, well, you don't know what the hell is going on, you know what I mean? What's your name, where you live, and you know, all that, and then. The Germans bring us inside, fill it up, wrap, close, but the, the way you see, exactly, yeah. You yeah, the night started train leaving, driven, driven, we go, we go, and we hear go Salonica. All of a sudden, we hear about hey, the aeroplane coming. The next morning, we arrived in Germany, in Kaisliga. Kaisliga is the only thing I know because I hear the name when we get in inside for the first time. Believe me, you want to be, be yourself. And I see a group, German dressed up well, army, two Gestapo, and started giving names. You know, you know, already know the name we come in with the train. You no, know, you call your name, Theodor Fanja. I've never known. 250 are my number. That's all I know. You have the number. They know that. from there you don't know your name. We have Polish people in another section, and we know that the Jewish, but we don't know where they are. You know, I find out before they move us, we saw because we are very close to the train station, and we, I saw all the, the train full, all the young girls that the spread the way we have it, and we realized they are the Jewish people. And next to it used to be the Lagerfeuer's office, big band. The Germans live in there. Lagerfeuer, like you know what Lagerfeuer like means? He, the Lagerfeuer like is the, the manager who controls everything, you know? Wow! Wow! You come inside, you know such a word, no time to feel like it, all in more, three and more, four and more, depends how the weather, how you feel about it. So you what, have the rights. How did they wake you up? Wow! 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 Take care of them, get up. Call in the morning, call your name, your number actually, your number. You know, there somebody going to pay for When they bring us up to the to work and we don't go alone, we come with the group, with the Germans. And the night come home the same way, before Christmas, ten days before Christmas, one day they come in, they pick up, we are about, about 15 and a half, grappling, they us, put us, and he bring us far, I don't know how far we can take it. And I remember he promised us we stay there, one German, he promised. He says, we'll go back, we we'll give you something to eat. And he bring us some place, we the call the guys go to underground. Mine, is, well, mine, mine, is, mine. mine. He bring the train, he bring us down with the train down. And after what train is coming down, they bring a lot of boxes and they move the boxes and put in the air. What they have in the boxes, I don't know. Keep us about two and a half days, and after bring out, they bring back. As a matter of fact, I told the, with the German guy, he said, What's the food you're going to give us? He said, You want it? He gives you the <laughs> I'm laughing at the truth. Yeah, yeah. After a little while, and you give us, you know, give us grass. A boil. If you eat one man and the next one will go for. <laughs> hey, so they I'm boil, laughing about the truth. The grass and yeah, yes, yes, dry. Like you have dry grass. Dry, huh? They boil. They don't have to eat. They might. They, they, they don't believe it, no believe it, no believe it. Wow. You know she bread. Wow, wow, wow. You don't think nothing, you think of how you can survive, you know, it's nothing else. And most of the old timers, everybody says how we can survive, how we can live, how we can do it, how we can do it, how we can do it. it yeah, you know, show your mind is frozen, 
the only you know you are to, there, you are not thought of as nothing else. Not only me, most of the people. The nothing, I never thought of. The only thing you get up in the morning, you know it's another day. That's all you know about. One morning, he come, uh, one guy, he have one hand, big uh, guy with a lot of stars there, and talking about themselves, bring us outside. And a little while, we saw the tr trucks coming, trucks coming, trucks coming. You don't know what the hell happened. They put in the trucks, started to move us, then move us another place. Well, the other place you go, how far, I can't remember. But I remember when I go through the bridge, a big river. They bring us down in the low area. We go and start to make tunnels under there. But six, seven months, we started there, working, working there. What were Thank you doing you. for that, those six, seven months? Inside, you cement, make cement to finish the... Yeah, by the time of the cement go inside, all of you frozen. <laughs> I love that we did. Uh, so called, finally we decided we survive. Any time we, uh, we unloaded the cement, you know, we do cut it, it put <laughs> inside. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Over here, you know, feel nothing. A month, month and a half later, we started hearing boom, 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 Underground, you see yeah. here. Underground. They, yeah. And I saw one guy come in, big guy in the stuff. He talked, he talked, 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 and he left it. Now I think I changed the rest to you know, old men, German, a camarade. But a little bit. What's going on? He said to me, you know, here are German, Americans, American, American, what? Well, of the stupid. <laughs> All right, you bring us back. When they bring us back and come through again for the bridge, I saw some people working under the bridge, Germans. I said to myself, he told me we were there, American, American. You know, hear the bombs, maybe something else, uh, you know. Only the next morning they come and they put everybody, have that, have the horses, the big boats, but no horses, put that on the horses to the door. And the Germans found them. Soon I saw that, I said, I have to do something. Regardless of why I decide to do it, I decide because I know I'm not going to make it in the end. I thought of it, I see different things, we hear different things, survive or not because you're never going to survive. It is so in a hurry to live, never have no names, no nothing, no numbers, no nothing. Grab everybody, keep going. That particular morning, when I hear the living, I decide not go with them, stay there. When it happened, it happened. And the only solution I saw, take off and go to the street, street house, jump in there. My so mind was going to be there. You follow me? I hear a lot of voice, a lot of voice. And I realized in German. I said to myself, the time the German moved to some area, SS coming behind, clean the area. No matter I say, I don't believe myself for me get out. All of a sudden, I see rockets. I hear somebody yelling, oh, mom, my, 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 mom. I said to myself, have to decide what I'm going to do. Remember, I said, I saw some people under the bridge and fixing something, and I saw the bridge down. Now the bridge there, the big Negar River is there. And now I decide to move and I said to myself, how do you go across over? If I go to the river, I see the bridge for far away, this way, down. I said, if I go to the river, maybe I catch something. I jump it. Almost a heart attack is cold. Now, to tell you the truth, the owner threw not by the door, but I cannot believe myself either. I crossed over and started crawling up. I saw the first house. The woman coming out and started to talk to German. I said to myself, keep going. I go on, I go on slowly, walk and walk and walk. For far away, I see two people. When I come, when I come more closer, more closer, 
soon I saw the crown, I said, oh boy, it's the Germans. I thought it's the Germans there. I got more closer, I see him with the gun. How close did you get to... to he said, look good now, you come in there. <laughs> For the beginning, I thought he, he, the, uh, the American, the American. What happened? The French. And he stopped me. Out, out, <laughs> but more closer, they let look me. They started to talk to me in French. One guy talked to the other. He said, Come, you take me and they bring me close, not far away. Police station, already they occupy for the people. When they bring me to the police station, it looked like this. He started to talk to me. Parle bon français? No, no. After a little while, another big guy come in. He eh? started the same thing, the same question, the same question. Then the end, he turned around, says to me in Greek, now lady, now talk in Greek. How are you Greek? Hey, I asked you, be speak in Greek. He asked me where you come from, when he catch you, when, how you here. All that question come through, come through, come through. He go inside, have me there. Coming back and he says to me, listen, no stay long, the two days we move it right here. If you want to go, go to Monaco, so mention, they are the Americans. But today, go to with the, if with the fire department there and find something where there and you sleep there up to tomorrow morning. I yeah. said, where can you go? He says, no worry about, we occupy the town. I says, okay. I stay the night, in the morning, they tell me, go any house, find anything, steal anything, you will. He said, he said no worry about it. Anyway, I go to one house, some woman inside, he said, don't touch me, no, I said, he give me something, I wear. I saw a kid, no kid, with uh, the bike. I used the German word, papier. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> papier. Anyways, I took the guy, the bike for him, we started bike, bike, go, 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 like, go, go. Like and yeah, I come to an area and I look back to the place, look the back, I go, soon they throw me like this, they afraid me, I afraid them, but they afraid me. Meantime, I don't know too much about, you follow me? And I, what do you mean? I, you don't know too much already occupied for different like, countries, the German f f is afraid. But meantime, I don't know that. I'm afraid of them. But the case will give me to the SS. And he give me a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And it was finally all night drive, and the next morning I looked the sign and it says five kilometers to Mona, Michigan. I take that road, I go to Monaco. Soon I go to Monaco, Michigan. I saw um, Americans start to put wires and this and that. I said, definitely they, be, they stay here. And I go for the road and found a lot of groups, some Greeks, some Polish. And I go inside and he says, we don't have a representative for Greece. But the only thing, you Greek, you have anything, I don't have nothing. We stay almost... Uh, Two months, finally the caller says, or oh, said, we have fly, you guys go back to Greece, bring us to the airport with the Toyota to the Italy. When did you feel like you were free, like you were free? I from... feel comfortable arriving to Monaco and Michigan. Because they are full of American soldiers. My mother knows not recognize me. As a matter of fact, when I go, I want to get into the bus, but no money. One woman come in and saw me, and he says to me, will you live? I says, no, I'm living. I just say, I'm living right there. Well, you know what she did? It? Well, she take the bus and go find my mother. I told my mother to come today. <laughs> After I find out, I don't know before. And I get out, my mother and my older sister, she died two years ago, over here. My mother will get out, I have the, all American uh, coat, you know, the army coat, the hat, you can see the hat I have there, still I have it there, yeah. And look, you can't find me. <laughs> Finally, I look, my mother, she look, <laughs> yeah. 
Meantime, the night I go home, I said to my mother, I want to put something to clean myself. She says, I don't have no water, no have water, I have no have heat. Wait till tomorrow when the sun arrives, I put the water to you. <laughs> you laugh at that. Meantime, many of those guys we are together, we always will say, if you go before me to Greece, tell my wife or my mother or my sister I'm alive. One person there all time, huh? he lived about 20, 15 miles far from my town, and he told me, Theo, if you arrive at my wife live in such a place, you can go tell them I'm alive? I said, yeah, I do it. Why did you choose to Be do that? One, because I'm before him, to deliver the wife, he, the man is alive, you know that. If he, somebody go before me, tell my, my mother I'm alive because nobody know who we are. Did you have um, a hard time getting used to like normal life again? Like Go back to new life, the country you're born and you face no, no situation. Greece already have silver war in Greece at the time. Friends, grown up together, play together ball. And everything, one is for one side, for the other side, the survival. And one here, the other. The same people grow together. And after I saw that, after I come in Greece, and I come say hello to you, and the other friend said, no talk to him. I go talk to him, you tell me no go to him. Many times I said to them, you forgot together we grown up in a school and we play like this one going to hit the other because so cold and but i know so much hate and i try to avoid it no matter i turn it be the one way the other hate you go the other hate we arrived before germany camps they call us communists when you arrived, that's what yeah, yeah, yes, yes. They give us good to the whole come home. We kiss the, kiss the ground because we come for the camps with the German not taking people in camp if no communists. So people didn't know what happened to you? People didn't understand? No, you don't know nothing. The only thing, a lot of people in Germany or voluntarily go to Germany working or prisoners, one or the other. You follow me? Any place you go, the first city asks you to go give a clean papers for FBI, you are clean man, means that you know uh, communists. The place you go, you need a piece of paper. How long were you in, uh, in, in Greece? Oh, almost, almost, almost 10 years, 10 years in Vero. year 1957, July 7, jump out of the boat. New Yorker is the name of the boat. How was a different life for you in, in America? Oh, I found no paradise. It, what was it? I found no paradise. <laughs> what did you do for work or anything? Where did you live? Want to come here? Yeah. Soon I come in here. I come in Friday night, Monday morning, already I boarded uh, my to Susan Bros to start working. I come Friday, two in the morning, three in the morning. Monday morning, I have the two bros to learn how to play the violin, to make nickel, pennies and nickel tips. I worked for 80 months, $13 a week, 70 hours a week, and I make a roomy house, pay $8 a week for a roomy house. I got about 20 bucks in my pocket, and I go to the station to, to uh, wait in the line to hear somebody says, give me a ticket for, for Boston. <laughs> and I still wait, and she wait. Finally, old lady come in, and I hear her say, Boston. She goes, she go by, go behind, give the guy $10 in Boston. And he asked me, and really, after years, I realized he asked me round trip or what. I said, Boston, <laughs> nothing more. He gave me the chance, and I saw the woman, I said, Boston, yeah. I grabbed the two, <laughs> the two suitcases to help her. <laughs> and she called me, I told to steal for her. <laughs> I, I mean, laughing today, those days, I don't know nothing. Anyways, finally, she realized 
I'm dummy, I don't speak English, and he said to me, I'm bored, are you bored? After a little while, I saw half of a drone, one uh, Air Force dresser. And I said to him, you bored? Yeah, he started to talk to me, I don't know what he told me. I said, you bored? All were, yeah, bored. And I was funny, I saw him coming ready. Before he arrived to train station, he ready to go. I said, hey, bored? Yeah, bored. He, he jumped before, and it was, we get out, get up, out. I work in the Cambridge, I live in the Cambridge, in the rooming house, where all the bombs live there. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, when I get inside, and I saw the ba ba bathroom, uh, anyway, different story, yeah. but I don't have no choice. The Orfanos Command, when they come for Middle East, for Constantinople, where they kill all the Greeks and the Armenians, nobody knows his name. And the town, the area we live. And at the time, the town called go see the Orfanos kids, the Orfanos kids. And from there, one day, my father says, if everybody called me, I'm going to register myself Orfanos. Name coming for orphan. In Europe, most children were distinguished by their father. That's Peter's son. That's John's son. Since he had no father, no mother, and he was an orphan, they used to call him the orphan boy. My father used to be for Athens. And for Athens to come to my town is by miles. At those particular times, we don't have buses. You have trains. Yeah, but the train is almost five miles from my, uh, my, uh, and my father. When he tried to survive for us that time, he came with the train, and when he get out, out of the train, he fall down his head. And one guy, you have to know when we live, and come to our house, and that particular time, Vespina, my sister, and he come and told me, let go pick up my father. And walking all the way down, pick up my father. I'm young, my sister very thin and very small. One Italian soldier is over us, and he helped us to bring my father to my house. That the day, the day after my father died in the bed. Your dad, your father, was malnourished because there was no food. No food, no food. So he was weak. Yeah, yeah weak. And he and tried, if he brings something to, to feed us. Matter of fact, one day he brings spaghetti and give my mother to cook the spaghetti and we have nothing. And my mother, he, uh, he broiled uh, onions and give me dressing and I tried to eat and I, I no luck. And my father says, I kill myself to support you. I remember, I never put my father never put hand anybody I can remember. To some people, if not done to slap you on the face. And he says to the only thing tell me, I'm trying to make you people get survive and you pick it. I pick it. Young kid like him. And I, I remember that now. Have you watched any movies uh, about the Holocaust or anything? I mean, here and there, the TV, sometimes I watch a different thing. That remind me a lot of things coming back in the memory. Sometimes I'm looking at something, I look something and see, I'm there. Maybe not the same place, but the same condition, yeah, sometimes. What kind of memories come back to you? Uh, memory, they, for, they hate it, they hate it. But that, after a little while, you see, no matter how much hate with somebody, many years later, it come and slowly disappear. By any moment we see something, remind you what happened to you. Are there any specific memories that come back to you when you think about? I remember the, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people who know how to eat and how we can survive. Uh, one try to talk to the other person inside, what you think gonna happen? Mark ourselves, one give uh, sympathy to the other. Nothing more to it. Do you regret helping the resistance groups in Greece? Uh, when we left, uh, the, uh, we, we don't know what happened. I've take us, we don't have no knowledge. But about. if you could do it over again, would you do the same thing again? I would have you? to. In those days, you have to survive for your country to be liberated, to be freedom. You follow me? And to this day, we probably only know just a small fraction of really the story of what happened.
Yeah, Theo went back. My dad went back there five years ago. He went back to Germany. Oh yeah, twice I went to Germany. Yeah, twice, and the last time they went, they went to the town where he was in the concentration camp. Pizza. The previous time where I go, we look at old timers because I know the town. And the time you ask him, no understand nothing. Second time I go with the guy, Italian guy for Italy. Uh, what's your name? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry brought my mother and father to the, the site, town. the site of where the concentration camp was on. And I think at that time, when you went with Ma and Jerry to the concentrate to to the, where the, the concentration go the location, no go the location. Right. The the site of where the camp was. I asked they, and he said, forget about it, don't exist anymore. It's it's a like a public works place yeah, yes. for the town now. I was reading a few articles and they talked about how um, the German government would send um, checks to Holocaust survivors. I don't know if you ever received anything um, from the German government. Yeah, they promised us when you go back to Greece, after the war. After the war, when we go back to Greece, little later he started told us to go to see different officers, uh, put the name down, and from there they said someday the Germans he, he compensate you with people what they did it and so forth. We're still waiting on the present moment. He's still waiting for his compensation. <laughs> Would you accept it? Would you accept compensation? It depends what it's all about. Uh, give me a dollar for I'm going to accept for. Funny story, my father, you, know how you and your brother, yeah. with the, the bodies you sell to bring to the medical students? Yeah, that's, forget about that. No, no, not... I want to hear it. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> I want to know. What they had us do for two, three dollars back then. Yeah, tell me, please. It was my brother is younger. If we met some doctor, they got a body, the skeleton, <laughs> and we bought it. You know that big, uh, big uh, clock she had with the time, you know, the big ones? They put that inside. The oh, grandfather clock? <laughs> yeah. We bring to the bus, and they bring up a nest, ready to get on it. <laughs> I'm laughing, though, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so to I, survive, you look at a lot of things to do it. But we never sell nothing, no kill nothing. Aku Vlepe Sopa. You asked what he taught us. You don't have to be the person, you don't have to prove you're the smartest person. The smart person isn't trying to out talk everyone, and doesn't have to, doesn't have to do all the talking. You listen, you pay attention, you don't have to open your mouth. You don't have to keep your going and talking to prove how smart you are. The smart That's the method I use. Aku vlepe sopa. And it'll help you listen, survive. See, why? And you buy. So you open your mouth, you sell it. Listen. And that's another method of survival. You always say it doesn't, doesn't matter how much you have, if you go to the well and keep drawing from the well and it doesn't rain, there'll be no water someday. Same with food <clears throat> and with- Plan. You just have to plan, you have to think to before you do. Keep your eyes open, to look. Yeah, and to always be honest Listen. and forthcoming with people and- Emilio. To never when, ruin your name, because that's one thing in life you can never get back, is your name. And it's not your name, it's everybody's name you're ruining. Not yeah. Emilio. And it's not, and just because... All right, when I finish, oh, excuse me, because they are there are jumping a lot of things. When I finish out of, the, out of the hospital, okay, three months later, I opened business in Boston, downtown Boston. I bought a shoeshine place, had clean and a repair shop. A repair shop, yeah. For 3,500. And the heart, we are down. The heart of town, yeah. And I started there working, all day shoe shine boy, and after six o'clock closing and try to repair shoes for survival. My wife used to be working, seven o'clock the night, eight o'clock the night, nine o'clock to night, feet, and feet food to eat, up to 11 o'clock the night. The next morning, all in the morning, I no want to pay. And I walk in for Cambridge to Boston walk to save uh, 15 cents.
Because that day, in my 90 cents, second day loaf, buy 12 loaf bread for 90 cents, hard sell. Another thing about him is he'd help anyone. So the fact that he was a little boy helping his country and Europe and the yeah, his Jews. values have never changed. He's still the he's, same. Man. He's the same person. He's 90. Just he's turned 92 still years old. old. Boy. <laughs> he just turned 92. And he, to this day, a stranger or anyone, a frame, family, friend, stranger, anyone asking for bring help. All, all my family for the other side here. He's brought everyone. I helped my wife family. and my family. And my all mama. my family come here. I mean, I'm no bragger about it. Even, even the, what you call it, the... To a fall. Uh, the, we have the probation office in Boston. Yeah, yeah. He bring me kids to work in for me because they hear the area where I am, I'm a good person. And they tell me those kids, if you do anything wrong to you, let them know. Meantime, I don't know the probation mean. Those kids have little problems. And one for them, three of them good. One little bad, by the end come out and thank me. Because when I catch him play the piano, <laughs> stealing from the cash register. The cash register, and I know say nothing. So at the end of the week, provide give to him ten dollars. I give him eight dollars, the two dollar mission. And he said to me, "Where's that?" I says, the, "Your money." He says, "What?" And afraid maybe I go to to the probation officer. I know. And six months later, eight months later, I saw one day a soldier coming to my store, and look my face to me, come in and hug me, says. Thank you very much. You make me, <laughs> because if you put back, I'll never be in the army now. <laughs> I'm laughing over that, yeah. Remember, I say many times, easy to make somebody get a halari. You're thinking about who make them to be that way. You're born that way. Situation created by you don't have knowledge and be around, you follow me? In other words, they weren't born anybody bad Anybody born, case. you're not born to be thief. Anybody not born to be killer or any born. The situation grown up. Society, but they not realize for himself to be the good condition, but got the wrong condition. I don't want to brag about. I'm working very hard. For the day I arrived here, I told you, Friday I come in late. It's Monday morning, I have two brushes and started working. You to make tips, pennies, and nickels. And I work in uh, 70 hours for $13 a week, and I pay $8 for a roomy house. Shoe shine. And when I met <laughs> my wife, and she supports me very much, she good partner in me, and a whole little bit after I married to make family, I went a few years, when I started to create the first boy and continues, and at the time we grown up and the age they can understand, and I told them, just be careful, up to you how you can be united and make better yourself. No expecting nobody nothing, you try how you can do it. Promises many. The truth is that if you don't do nothing, nobody does for you. And so far, they make something decent for themselves, my kids. Not the excellent kids, but the good kids. <laughs> uh, the truth. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm not bragging about, about I'm not bragging. America, different life we gr I grown up. You guys have to realize how good they are for you to born this country, that's all. The country is not sorrow, it's unity. If one the other no understand, no try to communicate, is no good. Jealousy is very easy. Two results very tough. And I don't have the opportunity people have today. I try in the condition I am, my mind is here, but my muscles are more here. Grow yourself, the country grow too. Look around you and decide which one way you wanna take it. Nobody stop you. Anyway, up to you to make the difference. I appreciate the opportunity I have to speak today because I feel a free man.